Hello, and welcome to what's well, probably going to be a very long video, Miss Weaver. Um, I'm going to try something a little different, as um, maybe you might already know, but I'm going to make two videos. Uh, I think I'm going to go harder on this one, and then way super casual, you know, just real quick on the other one. Basically, I'm just going to tell people, like, how to play on another one, and then this is going to be the super long one, taking you guys on the journey. To kind of prove how I even did the math and why you should even trust it or not. <laughs> but yeah, this is, I'm just, this is going to be like the, how did I even do this tier crafting? And yeah, this is about Monk. And I feel like maybe I should go a little extra hard and try harder on Monk, which is why it's taking me so long. I put so much time into this. And I'll be honest, I'm not really that satisfied. I never am. But I think, um, I think I'm at my wits in, I'll be honest, guys. I tried so hard and I got one good thing. I got one good thing out of this. It's a mythic plus build. Uh, the raid builds are good that I came up with, but, and they're very strong. Supposedly, according to the numbers, they should be higher than last healers I've theory crafted. So that's a uh, possible. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so I have 19 pages of shit. This is a long process. Um, so, in case anybody's wondering, I did I did all of my theorycrafting with most of the talents. Now, a lot of these talents were very difficult to theorycraft. Uh, a lot of them create alternate scenarios. A lot of them are switch talents. Tier of Morning and Rising Mist was probably... That talent single-handedly probably cost me like seven hours. Not even kidding. Um, it's pretty much what I started identifying as the main issue that was going to cause problems with the build. Um, so yeah, I did my normal thing, right? I went down, I don't know if I have it on here. Um, let's see. If I should be doing this like off. Um, I don't think I really have it on here, but yeah, I, w I did my normal thing. I put the Mist Weaver base abilities on there and I slowly altered them, right? Um, oh man, so theorycrafting Mist Weaver was a nightmare. Oh yeah, I know what I need to pull up, my notepad. So I made a series of notes. Um, <laughs> they're pretty aggressive, uh, but yeah, I, um, I made like, what is it? 32 notes while theorycrafting and it's just, Man, they made so many changes while I was theorycrafting Monk. There were so many broken talents that do and don't work. I had to go, regrettably, to the... No offense, but it's just a personal thing, actually. But I had to go to the Mistweaver Discord and look up frequently asked questions and certain things just to save time because they actually do their due diligence over there. It's actually, I would argue... I would... I mean, I wouldn't even... I don't think I even need to argue. It is the best healer Discord by, by a country mile. Um, still got a lot of people in there that are kind of weird, but, you know, at the end of the day, they do their research, and I feel like they're the most passionate, but I could be, it could just be biasness. Um, so, yeah, uh, I could start with these notes, but I'll just kind of walk you through, and then we'll talk about the notes later. <clears throat> so, I did all my theory crafting with, uh, 20% haste, uh, 20% crit, and basically the equivalent of 20% for mastery uh, i know that these are this is kind of unrealistic and you can't get this many stats but i felt like i wanted to pump the stats up so i could see the relationship between the spells so we can always take um you know 10 15 percent off the top of like the final product so to speak um but what we're not really interested in sims comparing it to other healers as much as i am just seeing how the fuck you should play monk right at the at the highest level so I've sort of highlighted things in dark green that really poked out of the texture and then things in light green, um, usually the stuff that was didn't have a cooldown that was really strong. Now this is going to be impossible to decipher and I apologize because a lot of this is written in language that only really I understand, but I had to essentially theorycraft everything around um, Tier of Morning and Rising Mist conditions because they, they they put alternate, because they were showing to be competitive really early on, I, and because there is a switch talent, 
I had to create alternate situations. And also there was still a possibility that you didn't even play this talent. So then I had to create three base. I basically had to theorycraft a class three times. Uh, and it was super annoying. And I can scroll down to sort of some of the math, right? To give you guys an example. Also the tier, you know, is kind of convoluted a little bit. And so I had to do a lot of testing to see how exactly it affected spells and how it didn't. Um, there was a lot of things I had to test an insane amount um i had to check to see like what does rising mist actually extend does it work with dancing mist does it work with rapid diffusion does it work with misty peaks like how do does it all work and while i was testing they were changing the game uh like the amount of times i just threw my like hands up in frustration and just paced angrily in the hallway was like really embarrassing to me personally um like, cause I felt like I was just like failing. I felt like I was just like, at, I couldn't, like I couldn't do it or something. Like, I don't know. And I don't know. I mean, at some point, does it get like too complicated where you can't do it? Maybe. But anyways, um, I'm going to move on here. So I guess I could go a uh, spell by spell basis and sort of talk about the stuff that kind of goes into it. Right. So first of all, the first thing you ever have to do is you have to go over here when you're theorycrafting and look at a class's aura modifiers, right? And the reason you have to do this is because it's never all the same. Like, see, you, the first thing listed is like a special modifier to verify. Um, I don't exactly remember which one of these were true and which one of them wasn't, but I basically, I went to Wowhead, I looked over how much these abilities said they were going to do, I looked at how much they said they did in-game, and then I tested them individually on both the beta and in retail, just to the quadra check that all the data was the same. And I did find a few mistakes, uh, namely actually with Wowhead, listing incorrect values. Um, and I had to like check in blue post to make sure that these weren't like upcoming changes. Just a couple mistakes for the most part, Wowhead was pretty consistent, but they do have one massive uh, consistency problem with, um, Vivify, right? They have the improved Vivify talent automatically baked into the base amount that it heals for. So if you were to go to Wowhead and you were trying to do your own theory crafting, you were to hover over Vivify, it is automatically baked in the um the Vivify talent thing, which is super annoying because I had to, you know, I basically I, my point is I am super anal about this stuff because it matters so much based off like what I suggest that I have to test everything and make sure everything works. You have to make sure the math is accurate, right? Um, so yeah, the so with the the oh yeah, the, all the ancient teaching stuff was kind of difficult, right? So you've got um, you've got potential fuckery with Feline Stomp, Ancient Concordance, Awakened Feline, Spirit of the Crane, Teaching the Monastery, and Ancient Teaching sort of all coming together. Um, so of course, you know, I have to bundle them all together. And the question is, how do I bundle all of that together and come up with values? I don't know if I chose the right choice, but I essentially, I assumed for the sake of theory crafting that you have all these talents and it was proving impossible to come up with a way to, to say that these spells made mana from spirit of the crane, because I didn't know what mana meant yet. So I actually added the mana cost of a global per cast time retroactively to all every single spell in effect except for the two spells that give mana um and i kind of tested this and it kind of gave me the desired effect right so if, if anything wasn't basically everything but like i don't know life cocoon right because it's off the gcd is theoretically taking up a spot that could be you making mana from spirit of the crane technically right um, and that helped a lot with essentially figuring out, like devaluing the value of casting Soothing Mist, right? We all know it's like bad to sit there and channel a Soothing Mist, but we don't necessarily know why. And like if you have Spare the Crane, that's, a, that's like six globals, technically eight, that you're not casting, you know? Like there's just no way Soothing Mist is an efficient heal when you have a way to farm free mana. Um, and you only need to cast Phalan every... 30 seconds in order for this to work. Anyways, that's how I did a lot of this. So in order to do ancient teaching math, I started with, um, obviously you have to start with the final product, which is rising sun kick, right? And of course 
you you don't know what talent you're gonna take yet so you need a tier of morning version you need a regular version and you need a rising mist version of rsk and so i did that um wherever it's at yeah here we go ancient teaching rsk then we have rsk version with 10 hots rsk this is uh rsk plus renewing rising mist and then rising mist with 20 hots then the tom version um and then i get these numbers right and then i use the same technique that i use with holy priest for for getting rid of their um reducing their holy word cooldown essentially um blackout kick absorbs some of the stats of rising sun kick like it's cast time it's mana cost it's healing based off uh, the percent that it's willing to reduce it right which in this case is 18 percent after the talents right after what is it this part this one six plus 12 right um so yeah that was cool and then of course it's a trickle down so then tiger palm absorbs um essentially two charges of blackout kick which is in turn, you know, 36% of an RSK. Um, and that's like the only way to prop. And then basically once you're finally done, you don't look at Blackout Kick and RSK anymore. You only look at Tiger Palm for determining what the combo theoretically is. Um, so yeah, there's that. that was the, that's the only way I could think to do the math. And of it's kind of awkward because they absorb the mana cost of RSK with RSK being sort of debuffed with an increased mana cost of not being uh, Tiger Palm and uh, Blackout Kick for the purpose of Spirit of the Crane, right? So I wanted to see, like, what's the difference between just farming Spirit of the Crane mana and never, you know, Rising Sun Kicking? And I needed to have that data separate, so... Yeah, I don't know if that made any sense, but that was a lot of work. Um, but I knew it was going to be a key part of the build, especially with the essentially double the amount of kicking uh, possible now because of all the Feyline stuff, right? Um, Vivify was also, of course, a nightmare. Although Vivify is rather easy in that the spell isn't really modified. It doesn't change other spells. It only gets affected by talents and stuff, right? So, you know, you've got your improved Viv Vivify... Um, some stuff with up of the spirit so it automatically i knew that i couldn't do vivify math until i did revival math because I, every cleave with 20 percent critical strike chance is 0.2 seconds off of revival right um, in theory right because you crit 20 percent of the time for one second 20 percent in one second is 0 0.2 0 0.2 per, per cleave right so that was annoying so then you go to revival right and then you know revival is sort of its own issue and i could i could go to revival but that's like what you have to do is you have to figure out okay well what's 0.2 percent of a revival we'll have to figure out what revival is and then if revival is modified or modifies anything then you know you have to keep like chasing everything back to the root which is super annoying because sometimes there isn't a root um which is what kind of happened in this case so with a lot of missed stuff so sweeper stuff um so yeah, naturally I had to do a Vivify plus Tier of Mourning, and I had to do a Vivify during Escape of Reality, a Vivify with RM um, at an average of 7 rims. So theoretically, also I have Vivify with other rims for RM, and also Vivify for Tier of Mourning. Just like a so much bonus math, that's so annoying, right? Um, also Vivify has a chance to, you know, if cast on a rim, if you have tier of mourning uh to make a new rim right and so you have to calculate okay well what's the average duration that a renewing mist would be when you cast vivify on it and so that was annoying and i i essentially i assumed like perfect play you know um you're tfting or you're renewing mist and you're never you're never attempting to cast vivify on a renewing mist less than 20 seconds right um sue me <laughs> like at some point you just have to pick something i guess i guess it could have gone for the average of 15 but um you know also i didn't expect you to be spamming vivify all the time so uh expel harm was relatively simple and easy to do um another thing when doing all the theory crafting is i have to figure out does it get haste scaling does it get crit scaling does it get uh mastery scaling how does it get haste how does it get like certain things are really annoying certain things that you think would get a scaling don't get a scaling like i thought what was really interesting is 
and I know I, I kind of already knew this before from doing it the previous years, but Soothing Mist doesn't do more healing per cast with haste at all. It just finishes its cast earlier, which is actually super bad because there's so many things in this game that are buffed while you're casting Soothing Mist. But if Soothing Mist ends faster because you have more haste, it's like proportional to the ticks, right? Or the globals that you'd use during its duration. So it's not like you can just stack haste and get more clouded focuses off. Um, wherever the hell that button is over here. Uh, you more clouded focus cast off during a soothing because your soothing ends earlier with a haste. So there's no gaming it, which I think is actually really cringe. Um, I personally think that soothing shouldn't even have a, a duration. Um, Actually, I'm not, I'm, I don't even want to say what I personally think because I'll just be here for five hours. I think this class needs like a ground up rework personally, but um, I, and I also think it since it has so many bugs, there's clearly something up like you know, it has a very committed community, though. So maybe everybody just got secretly angry at me. Um, yeah, of course, I had to, I had to theorycraft soothing mist plus unison. Uh, there was a little bit of unison fuckery while I was theorycrafting. First it worked with statue, then it did, and now it did. Um, if you do switch talents, I know I, I figured this out the hard way. Um, you have to recast a statue. You know, I was talking to a person about this. They said, uh, like, of course, that, and I thought that was dumb. But yeah, I don't know. Does that intuitive to you guys? That's not intuitive to me. I, I feel like if you switch the talent and you have your statue down and it's supposed to do a thing when you cast a thing, it should do that thing. You know, I shouldn't have to summon a whole new statue to, to reflect the, the talent point that I just clicked in, but whatever. Um, let's see. I guess we can keep going. Of course, I had to do the clouded focus math. Came out to be actually pretty competitive. Um, but then, yeah, I went through the ringer on like thought experiments and I had to bring out the old paper and pencil again just so I could like figure out how to how, how to play this damn thing and even then I'm not like 100% certain and there, there might be something I missed I'll be honest and I'm thinking so hard about what that might be I know there's a third build that I'll mention when I get to the end here um, you know it's an honorable mention I guess I can talk about it now it's it's a clouded focus life cycles build that kind of works uh, like you wouldn't you wouldn't like do terribly if you played it um, it's just really weird and it definitely is a tier of morning build and you would alternate between casting EMs and um, vivifies obviously right so you'd first soothing the target and you'd be playing around life cycles but between life cycles and cloud of focus it would actually make the cast rather cheap and even though even though you're recasting em on the same target which is cringe um you get a lot of value out of it because a tier of mourning it splashes all of that to all the renews and any new renews you cast from re eming the same target will go to new people so it kind of came out pretty close but i didn't really like it because it was like the same numbers but Playstyle was like super degenerate and it was weird as hell. So if it doesn't do more healing and it's like really cringe, then I'll mention it in case somebody wants to play it. But it, it it's really weird, like a really weird playstyle. Also, it's kind of confused in that it doesn't really play around the Celestials like the other two do. So um, yeah, and its filler would have had to been that would have been its filler. Uh, I don't know. There's a world where it's it's okay, but it, the problem is it doesn't beat out RM's filler, and it doesn't beat out the burst. Like, it doesn't do... Yeah, I don't know. Alright, so EM was a nightmare to theorycraft for many reasons. Um, there's multiple conditions EM can, EM can take, right? Is it getting fully extended with an RM? Is it is it just hard cast normally and timing out? Uh, how many... Uh, you know, if you have tier of mourning, right? How, what's the average rims you have out? You know, what's the bonus? Also, one thing to keep a note is when you cast EM, it does the healing instantly to all the RMs if you have tier of mourning, which is kind of interesting. Um, of course, I had to theorycraft. Well, if that's the case, then if you spam EMs back to back to back to back, and because of Misty Peaks, uh, or Rapid Diffusion, rather, sorry, um, you could theoretically artificially inflate the RM count and that does work that does transfer more over and so casting more EMs 
does make that more efficient. Although you don't really do that in either one of the play styles. So, but you would do it if you got innervated. It's not bad. If you're the tier morning build and you get innervated, you just spam EMs because rapid diffusion um, tier morning is pretty insane. So I had to theorcraft the Misty Peaks proc, um, which is, you know, basically just, yeah, it was just a nightmare because I, I needed to know, okay, well, what's a proc version of it? What does a proc mean? And then what does the proc mean if it gets extended? And, oh man, Misty Peaks was a nightmare. Misty Peaks changed three times while I was theorcrafting. Three times. First, it was just three seconds. Then it became three seconds and it could be extended by RM. Then it became two seconds, which means it doesn't benefit from misrep. But then in its current state is allowed to be extended to eight seconds. What is going on? Like, I don't understand. I, uh, yeah, I digress. Okay. So, um, yeah. I don't know if I'm really saying anything of, of value here. Um, oh yeah, the tier kind of made things a little bit difficult. Um, overflowing mist, also a factor, you know, cause it, okay. So one thing that's really annoying that made the math very hard is right. So you have something that applies a portion of something and that something has a chance to apply again. And those somethings have a chance to apply a thing. Now, here's the crazy part. The reason why it really got hard is those procs, those EM procs, actually work with tiered morning. So your renews are going to be out in the world ticking, and they're going to proc an EM. And that EM is going to do 2 seconds plus 33% <laughs> healing to all the other renews. I don't know why, uh, but they changed the math like twice while I was tier crafting on what an EM will do with tier of morning from a proc. Um, they settled on it affecting an untalented EM, but at 33% increased power, which is just like really weird. Basically, it, I don't know what the math like of it came out to, but it was, it was like, you know, I, I don't know. What point six instead of it's basically like the same, if not a little bit better. I don't know, it was really weird. Anyways. Um Essence Font. Uh Essence Font represents a portion of Thunder Focus T's cooldown because of Font of Life. And so before you can figure out what Essence Font is worth, you have to figure out what Font of Life is. But before you can figure out what Font of Life is, you have to figure out what every other heal in the game is. Um, because Final Life affects Thunder Focus T, and Thunder Focus T can be a buff to so many things. And when you think about, uh, you know, and then it just splinters off, right? So then I had to make a Thunder Focus T, uh, <laughs> just spreadsheet practically of all the situations, of the three situations. So with RM, with uh, Tear of Morning, and neither and then i had to figure out okay well what does a random proc which is because um, down here you, you get random procs and here's intentional right so you either get two spells of your choice uh or you or you can also get one so you can have one spell of your choice two spells of your choice and then what i just said plus two random procs of two different types depending on which one you pick here so yeah basically i had to just steer craft what's a thunder focus t on basically any spell in the game going to mean for HBS for all three of the potential viable specs, which is no no talent or tier of morning or rising mist. <sighs> Fucking hell. And the reason I had to do it that way is because because normally I would have just theory crafted with both talents, but because you can't have both, you automatically are forced into doing sh shit this way. And also this is a switch talent too, which is super annoying and this is also a switch town, which is super annoying. Anyways, um, yeah. Now I lost my spot. Oh yeah, Essence Font. Yeah, Essence Font represents Thunder Focus T, which represents all the other spells. So that was like the last math that I got that got done. Um, upwelling, 
We've got Feline, Stomp. All of these things fall into the Essence font category because they all could potentially affect that. And they, I need that number. Uh, Renewing Mist was actually one of the latest uh, theorycrafts I did because I, it was important to me that I got the proc one first because Renewing Mist actually represents a portion of itself because it has a chance to multiply and then it has a chance to create an EM. Um... Yeah, so it was really difficult bouncing back and forth between renewing mist math and EM math because you know when you when you cast EM or rising sun kick you apply a small renewing mist. Renewing mist has a chance to copy itself, and then renewing mist has a chance to make an EM. So that means renewing mist procs represent a portion of EM. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then. Yeah, so it's just prox on prox on prox. It was super annoying. Uh, and then, of course, I had to theorycraft. Well, is it a RM that's been extended to 60 from 30 from being a Thunder Focus TRM? Is it a normal 20 second RM? Is it a thir just a 30 second RM, like Tier of Morning plus Thunder Focus TRM? Um, you know? Also, what's RM's chance? I had to math out all the chances, uh, plus, like, you know, average chances of a person being top because it can copy itself for 10% chance every time it travels to a new target. I was looking up some old forms and I heard about a particular situation that if you cast Renewing Mist on someone who's like 95% health and that Master Heal tops them, it actually like procs all the chances times like all the chances uh, and can just like print five Renewing Mist or something. And so I haven't been able to confirm or deny this, um, but I'll definitely be testing it if I play Monk. But yeah, if that's the case, then prioritizing Renewing Mist people when they're really close to full health would be an insane strategy, especially with like Tier of, uh, tier of Morning, right? If you're playing that play style. Um, because then you could just copy the copies. Or I mean, I guess actually it's about the same, right? Or, or with Rising Mist would extend all the copies. It it doesn't matter. Each one is insane. You know, all those tier of morning renewing mist would uh, proc the EMs, which would heal all the renewing mist. Or you would just extend all the renewing mist with rising mist. Like, And the numbers are like actually so close. It's crazy. Um, just because of the nature of how it works. But, um, yeah. Okay. I feel like I had more to say, but I'll be honest, I tripped myself up, so. Um, Life Cocoon came up to be actually kind of high, but that's because there's like randomly these talents that buff the shit out of it that you probably won't even take, though. Um, but when you combine them all, they're actually kind of insane. But the issue is like one of these is so impractical. Like, imagine spending 50 Soothing Mist Globals to buff Life Cocoon by 150%. Like... You know, is that ever going to happen? I did after it for it, but like, is that ever going to happen? Seems so unrealistic. Actually, in hindsight, now that I just realized it, this should have actually been added to Soothing Mystics, and it should have given a 3% of Life Cocoon ceiling to a Soothing Mystic. Yeah, that's, that's a whiff, actually. Um, it wouldn't have changed that much, but it would have pushed anything with Soothing Mist up a tiny bit, right? Because 3% of a Life Cocoon per tick would be actually kind of crazy of a bonus ceiling. That would be um, 8 ticks per cast, 24% of a life cocoon. Um, yeah, that would have been a significant increase to its efficiency. Would that push it up? I don't think so. Because it's soothing mist. <laughs> you know, I mean, again, all the time you're spending soothing misting it, it to be efficient. It's like time you're not spending either creating more mana or just doing other stuff so there's there's sort of that opportunity cost that you lose um i don't know but yeah that's something to think about instead of buffing life cocoon i should have buffed soothing mist there i mean you know even even spending so much time doing this and doing this for so long i still make so many mistakes and it's super annoying because i'm just staring at a wall of stuff that's technically exact and i'm the air i'm the human element but whatever i'm trying my best uh, Revival really buffed the, the hell out of itself if you combine it with an EF and a Bone Dust Brew. It basically doubles if you can manage to pull that off. Like a a um, an upwelling 
yeah, you know, into like the whole raid, code them all with that big mastery buff, and then you somehow bone dust brew the whole raid too, and then you revival. Obviously, it'll crank, right? Um, and all of this is obviously theorycrafted with um, replenishment miss, so that's why it looks so good. Um, is it pulse? Um, okay, so now we get to the fun stuff, the celestials. Um, so Chi G is a massive mana saver, whereas Yulon's where the real money is at as far as HBS, right? So right away there was already kind of a alternate running counter theme to the running theme already. So there's Yulon gamers, there's Chi G gamers, and then there's um, Tier of Morning gamer, Rising Mist gamer, and maybe potentially neither gamer, but you. I, it was already proving to be insane how much they were affecting the spells. So it was a question of, do are these variables independent? Is one just going to go the other? Is there, this person could be this or this, or could this person could be this or that, you know, it was, so I was trying to like, I spent a lot of time just like pacing my hallway, trying to think like, you know, is there a way I can just save math and um, kind of just figure out what the build is before I finish with all this math? Because it, having to math out everything was like insane and there wasn't because it was so close and actually in the end uh, everything's fairly interchangeable and you'll do about the same HBS but they have completely different play styles <laughs> so yeah um, anyway um, so yeah so here's the Chi G math with multiple targets so Chi G gets drastically better if there's any cleaving in the fight whatsoever and that's because of these talents so if you're running these talents with chi g um which you should be in my opinion but i'll get to that later then you can your target problem is going to hit twice every single time and then your blackout kick is going to cleave and hit three targets and then you know because your target problem hit twice that means every target problem makes your blackout kick hit three times because of this and then three times three targets is nine hits so two target problems basically nine blackout kicks two target problems nine blackout it's insane what it'll do in a chi g so yeah there's that um let's see also there was you know invoker potentially fucking with everything and because the way invoker adds haste it's not flat it's like true haste um it's like bloodlust haste you know it's like weird math it's like whatever haste you have currently plus 33 percent in parentheses, out of parentheses, plus flat, 33% haste. So 20 haste becomes 20, you know, six point, I don't know, math. Um, and then you add 33 haste back again. And yeah, it, it's convoluted. Um, let's see here. Of course, I had to do enveloping breath. Enveloping breath, if you had RM. Enveloping breath, you have TOM. And... The reason for this was because you're spamming EM the whole time. Um, and I think this data right here is actually incorrect because this assumes you're extending the RMs while you're playing and you obviously would never be doing that. But whatever, it's there. Basically, the RM math would be this one. Um, but the TOM math was insane, right? Because you're casting so many EMs and they're all making uh, Renewing Mist while you're spamming, it just drastically increases how much a... Uh, tear of mourning enveloping breath spam during your celestial really is and so like this number really poked out you know like that's a lot, a lot massive number and so that's where the build kind of started from um i quickly realized that there's going to be a tear of mourning yulon gameplay style uh refreshing j wins doo doo um yeah and i kind of went over the thunder focus t stuff um so yeah, to me, two builds basically seem viable. Um, you have a Yulon, Tear of the Morning, Upwelling, Statue. Oh yeah, so Statue is like kind of worth casting, right? Uh, for the Tear of Morning build. So you cast Statue. You don't actually want to be tied into spamming for eight seconds. A pretty useless spell. But just one global will activate it. So you just do the one global... And then you can go about your business doing other things. Um, originally, I had the Tier of Morning build. I assumed it was going to take Unison. And it, it can. But what Mending Proliferation does during a, 
a <laughs> an enveloping breath spamming Yulon is actually hilarious. It's just so much. Like everyone's got the buff. And if everyone's got plus 40% increased healing, then that means developing breath is at plus 40% increased healing, essentially. So yeah, that, that turns out to be so much. And when you take the one minute version, it's just insane. You, essentially it's a one minute, no matter what, you're topping the raid, no matter what. Every one minute with the tier morning build, you're topping the raid. Um, yeah, it just, it's insane. So, uh, I kind of went through, this is like the talent tree and how I, how good I view the talents for the, uh, tier of morning play style, which I just described. It's so you've got tier of morning, which is all cooldown based. It's just super ham only during celestial once every minute, super crazy. Other than that, you have the 45 second escape from reality vivify spam, which turned out to be really high. Um, and you know, I'll probably explain this better in the other video because I'm just trying to talk about theory crafting now. Um, but yeah, I, I went through, did these in individual talents. Didn't really like, you know, include how I got these, but to be honest, I can't be bothered. Um, you know, if it's, <laughs> I don't know. It is what it is. I essentially, I have another sheet where I did like a sim, um, you know, kind of like one of these. And I have a couple multiple of these where I just kind of like theory craft out like, okay, how do you, what's, what do you spin in a six minute fight? And then sort of add up all the numbers and then see how each one of these talents individually affects a six minute sim. Super cringe. Um, yeah. I mean, by the time I had gotten to the end, I kind of already knew the talents already. There was just a few, just a few, like the orange ones here are, are the only ones that I wasn't a hundred percent sure on. And so I kind of did a little bit of math down here to figure that out. Um, okay. So this is, yeah, this is the tier of morning play style. Um, let me see if I can, is there anything else I need to talk about? Oh yeah. You, you would, um, you still cast Chi Burst on cooldown. Uh, I mean, I have it all written right here. I'll put the link in the description, right? It's going to be Chi Burst on cooldown. You're still going to life cocoon as much as possible. You're going to take the life cocoon talent. So it gives two free hots. Uh, then they're at 50%, which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, that plus 50% EM doesn't tier of morning. I, ch I, ch I checked that. <laughs> I checked like everything. I really did. I, I tried to check everything because I knew that I'm still going to miss things. And I know that the Mistweaver Discord is going to rip this one a new one. But, um, and I, w I don't want to get caught slipping as much as possible, especially when this class is full of so many bugs. But I'm sure I missed something. I tried so hard though, man. Um,. Oh yeah, TFT you want to use on Rimprox. Um, you with, I mean, pretty much. I think both builds. I did the math. There is some viable other options, but the problem is like all the math is done with you TFTing the rims on cooldown, and I just I already know that just because there's a cap on Rising Mist, and you can get that with a you you can easily reach the cap no problem with haste. That there's really no point to recast rsk with the rm build also they changed uh this is something we could talk actually here's definitely where we where we should talk about this so i have some notes okay and i'll read them out to you these are things that i, I took notes at while i was working on all of this so um let's see how the tier works with vivify the two set gives cleave if it's 10 percent but on the main hill of cast on rim okay but it's plus 10 percent okay i don't know what the hell that meant um let's see four set always improves healing stacking linearly not multiplicatively with two set that's right so when you cast vivify it's only a, it's not like 10 percent plus 10 percent it's 20 percent total um let's see which spells work with rising mist rising mist affects dancing mist rising mist now affects misty peaks so before Misty Peaks was not, was not affected at all, and it was just being affected by uh, Miss Wrap, but now it works, and it goes for whatever reason to eight seconds. Um, it does not work with Rapid Diffusion, unfortunately. Even if you get RSK into RSK, it does not extend. Um, let's see. I said T of Serenity can't be used to proc EMs from Misty Peaks. Um, 
don't know what that means. Can't be used on proc EMs from the CPs. Don't know. Unison gets EMs bonus ceiling. Oh yeah, this is really cool. So Unison will split off from both you and the statue on an EM target and will heal also at an increase because it's just a percent based off how much you healed. I know this to some people might seem like a no-brainer, but you never know with this kind of stuff. You have to test everything. Um, Tear Morning works with Misty Peaks. I described that already. Um, that's the proc EM. Um, Unison is supposed to work on J. Okay, never mind. I already said that. Um, Misrep bonus only increases after the first two seventh heals and developing breath. Oh yeah, this there's some weird stuff, man. So Misrep, for whatever reason, the bonus is only increasing after two heals on enveloping breath and for EM. I don't know if that was a glitch in the system. I don't know if that's been changed. I don't know if when I was testing it was a bug, but I tested over and over and that's what I was seeing. Maybe it's like giving the full amount, but then it just kind of packages it into the last two heals. Maybe the first heal is like the on cast, and then it doesn't theoretically buff this wrap first. I don't know. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, I talked about that. Okay, overflowing mist does not scale with anything. Um, it can't crit. It does not speed up haste, obviously, because it's tied to developing mist. It's just unaffected by anything um at all it's always just one percent um misty peaks can't proc enveloping breath okay yeah so the the proc from the the em procs from running mist don't do enveloping breath i think at one point maybe they did but that was a bug and they fixed it uh oh yeah i listed some early combo daydreams uh while i was just randomly thinking it'd be pointless to mention them but uh, that's mostly for me. Um, teaching the Monastery does healing based off damage before armor. That's right. So teaching the Monastery does like damage uh, ba or healing based off like your tooltip number rather than just like what you actually hit for. Um, Thunder Focus T. Oh yeah, Thunder Focus T makes RSK a three second cooldown. Regardless of how much haste you have, uh, haste is applied after. So for example. Um, if you a 9.9 .9 second cooldown becomes 2.5 seconds af because um, you have you have a certain amount of haste. Sorry, some small child is trying to break in my room. You have um you have yeah, yeah so essentially the haste that you have is applied to the three seconds after. It used to be the case that uh, it would just give you nine total seconds of of RSK CDR. Um, so if you had like a six second cooldown. For whatever reason you're packing a fuck ton of haste you had 100 percent haste you know a couple expansions ago and rsk's cooldown was six seconds um then it would it would give you free rsk and then three seconds off the next rsk um yeah it was insane okay but it doesn't do that anymore so it's severely nerfed and because it always makes it three seconds it actually means that haste kind of has a little bit of diminishing return because your haste might have been giving you like three or four seconds off of the first cooldown and then you just set it to three and all you're gonna get is like a little baby amount at the end like maybe turn it to like 2.2 seconds you know so from like 9 to 2.2 it just doesn't feel as it's just not as good right you know it's not taking the full nine seconds off of its cooldown ever if you have any haste um well ahead and properly shows vivify healing i already said that Thunder Focus T, EM heal. Oh yeah, so the Thunder Focus T, I think I mentioned this. Um, oh yeah, okay, so the Thunder Focus T, EM heal. It actually applies to your, it works with Tier of Morning. And for whatever reason, it does it at an increased amount. So, um, I guess I should be hovering here. So see how it says when you Thunder Focus T and EM, it immediately heals for 266% spell power. Well, that actually gets... You actually get 25%. Up. Don't know why it's 25% and not 20, like Tier of Morning says, but it's 25% of that, and it transfers to all of your renewing mist targets. It's actually completely viable to Thunder Focus T your EMs um, instead of just using it on rims. If you need like an emergency heal, it, it would be an insane amount of healing just rippled out. 
So, um, attenuation only buffs bone dust brew from 40% healing to 48. Oh yeah, so attenuation is down here. Um, so it says it says bone dust brew uh, and increases healing by 20%. It's not a flat 20%. It's 20% of the previous number, which was 50%. So it makes 50% go to 70% which is really 35%. Yeah, you know, or sorry, the bonus healing is a 50% chance for 40%. It turns that 48% into 40% into 48%. Jesus Christ. I can talk, I swear. So yeah, it doesn't make the 40% go to 60 like you think it would. It just goes to 48%. Super annoying and cringe. Means it's not very good. Um... What other notes do I have? Um. Yep, yep, yep. Uh huh. Oh yeah, the rim problem. I um, uh, I think that in the future, if there's anything potentially exploitative about uh, Miss Weaver, it's gonna be based around these rim uh, bonus chances. It's 100% gonna be Dancing Mist. Dancing Mist is where all the fuckery with with monk is at currently in my opinion so basically i just left a note saying you know this is this is the chink in the armor <laughs> you know uh what else do we have i and i'll get to my mythic plus build here in a second oh yeah i talked about fixed issues while i was theory crafting um fixed an issue that caused misty peaks enveloping mist to not be extended properly by rising mist Fix an issue that caused refreshing Jade Winds tooltip to display an incorrect amount. Had to change that. Fix an issue that caused Enveloping Breath to trigger from Misty Peaks Brock. Enveloping Mist from Misty Peaks now correctly triggers the tier of Morning Mist. Uh, enveloping Mist heal at 33% effectiveness. Um, just they fixed a whole bunch of things, bro. It was super annoying. Um, yeah, oh yeah, right. So currently... Right now, ancient teaching is not working properly. So if you're testing on retail or on the beta and you're using your abilities and then you're like, huh, that didn't heal the proper amount, it's like super bugged. It's just not working properly at all. Um, number based and let's see. I uh, use tooltip and numbers based in game for spinning crane kicks damage and healing. Oh yeah, uh, I think this is also when it was bugged. But it was doing, if oh no, this was for uh, Awakened Feyline. Awakened Feyline was bugged. It was only doing 15.74% per person, rather than 25% per person, the damage done. Uh, I said on here, I assume the damage is correct, and I assume the healing is wrong, and they will fix it. So I used the correct math in my theory crafting. It's a little bit of a gamble, but it didn't matter at, at the end of the day. Um, Yulon whispered, no haste or mastery scaling. Yeah, Yulon uh, Whisper does not scale with haste or mastery, um, unfortunately. Um, EM's bonus does, how do I say, doesn't uh, rims for tier tier plus TFT. Oh, yeah. So I was I was trying to find out if I could cheese EM's bonus for on EMs, right? So if I could EM the EM targets and that new modified 40% increase would be sent out to the tier of mornings. I was looking everywhere I could find for cheese like that. Um, you know, where you just like spam one person and somehow it does a bunch of healing. Um, haste double dips with enveloping breath. Uh, and then there's no diminishing return on the haste that invokers provides because it's like true haste. Um, yeah, so when you're casting enveloping breath, when you're spamming, um, during invoke Yulon Jade Serpent, you cast faster with haste, and then the hot you apply does more with haste. So haste is a double dip during invoke. Um, so it's just insane. Uh, Seventy percent increased healing does tier of morning when spamming life cocoon target. Um, don't know what that means. Uh, because you lose the first global of Gift of the Celestials post Invokers, you lose a lot of value. Uh, also, Invokers is only 8 seconds with Gift. Yeah, so he says um, Invoker. Well, I guess it doesn't say it on here, but yeah, it says 20 seconds. When you take um, Gift of the Celestials, reducing your Celestial cooldown to 1 minute, but making its duration 12, uh, 
This changes to eight seconds. The reason being is uh, it was broken. <laughs> it was broken as fuck. So yeah. Uh, and if you notice, or if you have a keen sense for math, um, it's 80% of the duration, right? So 20 is 80% of 25. Eight seconds is 20% of 12. 80% of 12. I think. Or whatever it is. Either way, it's it's basically 80% of the duration. Um, what else? Oh yeah, it's not worth RSKing during Celestial, even if you're RM. So if you're RM and there's EM hots out, it's it's not worth it to even if you're spamming non-stop EMs, it's not worth it to RSK to extend them all because of how insane developing breath is. So that's it for the notes over here. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my Mythic Plus build. I think it's probably the most revolutionary thing I made. And I don't know how I really came about it. This was when I was trying to find, like, cheese and OP stuff for raid. Um, oh yeah, I guess I could talk about... Let me talk about the RM build first. So there's two builds, guys. There's one that's completely focused on Yulon, spamming during Yulon, having one-minute Yulons, bone-dusting brew for Yulon, Thunder Focus Ting before you Yulon for the haste buff, it's all about Yulon and casting envelop uh, casting EMs with Enveloping Breath. That's pretty much the whole build. It's going to use all of your mana. Uh, the only other thing you do is you escape a reality to spam 7 Vivifies or whatever the hell it would be um, at 50% reduced cost or 100% reduced if you take Manatee. Manatee will actually give you back or will take away the other 50% that escape from reality won't do. So, Escape from Reality refunds 50% mana, uh, and Manatee does the other 50%. So, really cool. Makes it free. You can use your Manatee on the Celestial EM spammings, other than that. And Manatee for the uh, for build A for the Celestial EM spamming build is very good. The other build, we don't take it because the filler is just too good and you don't really care about mana. Um, so, yeah. This is the Yulon build A. Build B... Um, is your typical Rising Mist build, sort of, but with the Fey Line over here. And basically the Fey Line, Teach of the Monastery, with the other stuff combined, just makes it to where your filler is way too efficient and does a lot of healing. Um, and so you kind of just want to use all of your mana and all of your time just doing your filler. That's why um, I have the wrong talents listed. Man, why does this keep happening? Super annoying. I thought I checked this. This needs to be um, GG right here. Other than that, everything else is correct. Maybe I'll just like put a GG over the top of this. Anyways, um, this build is very similar to A, with the ex with a few exceptions, right? Um, you always GG right after you just cast Feyline. Down downtime is just your typical. Um, you know, you cast RSK when it's up. When it's not, it's Black High Kick. When it's not, it's TP. Basically, the rotation is TP, Black Hot Kick, TP, Black Hot Kick. You're fishing for RSKs. When RSK procs, boom, you cast it. Easy clap. Uh, you don't use Statue on this because the global is literally not worth your time, this build, uh, because the filler is just so efficient. Um, yeah, you don't Bone Dust Brew because you don't have like an insane moment. Also, you're really strapped for talent points. You have almost no free talent points with this build. Actually, you have, you have none. Um... You can use additional Fey Lines if you have to, to apply more EF Hots, but it's not like super efficient. During emergencies, you can spam 8 plus uh, Vivifies. So you can spam Vivifies as long as there's like a respectable number of, of Renewing Mist out. I think you should never do it under 7. My personal opinion. Uh, and again, the Vivifies, the Vivify spam has to be like insane. Like there has to be like 10 Vivifies out for it to do the same healing per mana spent as just like doing your normal kick rotation. Just because how insanely efficient that kick rotation is. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. You really want to farm a lower cooldown of Chi when Chi is up. Um, so you're gonna Chi G. Um, it's just Tiger Palm block a kick. Tiger Palm block a kick. Repeat. You don't cast any spells. You don't RSK. Uh, the reason being is. It's two Tiger Palm hits followed immediately by three Black Hat Kick hits, and that's all times two Mastery heals, and that's going to do quite a bit of healing reduction. And that brings us to, uh, I think that's pretty much everything. You also still cast Chi Burst on cooldown. Um, you still do, 
Um, your escape from reality though, five spam is just like the other spec. And you also like cocoon as much as possible. And you do take the life of cocoon talent, so you get the knowing mist and the EM free. Um, you want haste on both builds. Here we go, mythic plus build. This is where the real fun's at, guys. This is where if you sat through this whole thing, you actually get rewarded. As I'll explain how this properly works. I'll probably explain it in the other video, but maybe I'll kind of walk you through the process on this one. So I was always looking at GG or Yulon, the Ed Jade Bond, as a potential for an infinity combo. Because why not, right? I'm always looking for some cheese. Um, I took a, took a good look at Jade Bond, and I was like, huh. And then immediately I was thinking about GG, right? And so I was like, okay. Well, someone would have done this already. It would be, it would be like well known if there's a way to like get uh, all the cooldown back. So obviously it had to be more convoluted than that, and it is very convoluted. But yeah. So if you put, um, if you recently failing the whole group, so everyone has the EF hot, that means everybody has uh, essentially plus one mastery on them, like a token you can redeem. Um, and then you have to fail line out. Which is important because you need that buff and you can farm three stacks of teaching in the monastery okay so you've got essentially four blackout kicks ready to go and under the fey line that cleaves three targets right so really that's 12 uh blackout kicks ready to go and believe it or not um so you know when you're chi chi it's all times two mastery so that would be 24 mastery heals uh of course all giving you one, you know, you get five more for free um, from the EF hot. And all of that is times two because of Bone Dust Brew. And so if you take the Bone Dust Brew talent that randomly procs and your group is relatively close and in melee, you can coat everyone with the Bone Dust Brew. Assuming you're already under the Fey line, you can immediately activate Chi, Chi, uh, Chi And your first global, because you should have the three sacks, will be a blackout kick that hits nine times, rocking 18 mastery heals, getting doubled by bone dust brew, the 36, on top of the, the five getting doubled by the bone dust brew again, mastery heals from the EF hot for another 10. It, I forgot, I wrote it down here. It's essentially, it's 58 mastery heals in one global, <laughs> which is also 17.4 seconds off of GG's cooldown. Uh, right off the right off the rip and so you get to do dps for 10 seconds and on average um it's like 6.6 .6, and i i forgot i have it written here i did all the math it, it's a lot it's like on average it's um it's like 10 8 and then 36 so it's 44 cut in half it's 22 master heals per global on average while you're group is buffed with bone dust brew and then after 10 seconds that's when you actually cast your bone dust brew <laughs> and then basically that's 20 seconds which is almost a full 25 seconds of chi -G's duration you get the point after everything's all said and done and you adjust for the few seconds where you didn't have the bone dust brew and for the lost globals you can take off somewhere in the neighborhood with perfect play and a lot of haste about 132 seconds of chi -G's cooldown which is basically, because of the duration, it's off cooldown immediately. Isn't that cool? Uh, so yeah, if your team is like sort of melee based and you do massive pulls in Mythic Plus and you have a lot of haste and you're a good player and you line up all this stuff, you should have a permanent GG that does a lot of HBS. I think 22 Master Heals per second uh, is good enough or per, per global is good enough. Um, but who knows? Maybe not. Now in raid, this is only going to be LP if you can actually guarantee you could cleave three at a time. So I guess there's three builds. There's consistent healing with RM. There's super burst healing once every minute with um, tears of mourning. And then there's the cheese, the funky cheese, the build C build, where if you can guarantee that there's going to be at least once every... I don't know. I also, you so here's the problem with with uh, the cheese. With Bone Dust Brew K 
can't control the procs in raid. You can kind of control the procs in mythic plus because you have massive pool and then it, it only really activates when you're like in combat a lot, right? So you could just stay out of combat until you're ready to, for your setup, go in, cast your spells, it procs, you go to town, right? Uh, with the with the other one, you can't really control the procs, so it's pretty difficult. So maybe you could take the other Bone Dust Brew talent and you might be able to farm up so much CDR off of just the one cast Maybe it's back off cooldown in time, but I don't think that's possible. Um, either either way, even if you can only bone dust brew part of your raid, par, par, partial of the time, if there's three targets and you get to Chigi them the whole time, you should be able to knock off a lot of time off Chigi's cooldown. And it definitely would be the best way to play. Um, strangely enough, you still want to stack Heavy Haste because it's all about reducing. It's not necessarily about how much the mastery seal. It's all about reducing cooldown on GG. The best part about it is this is all free healing. And in raid, if there's three target cleave, you can always just alter the GG rotation to weave in an enveloping mist every three seconds, which is like the normal build, right? Um, so yeah, this is the cheese build C, the secret sauce uh, for Mythic Plus and for potentially boss fights where there's a lot of ads and everybody's like stacked. You know, it's a really situational cheese, uh, and it can only really work in, a, in one situation in the raid. Permanently stacked, always at least three targets to hit, would be insane healing. Insane. But, obviously that's very unrealistic, so. Uh, let's see, what time am I at? How much, how long do I make this video? That's, hours not actually that bad, uh, for this being like the more complicated video. Um, what else could I talk about? I feel like there's some things I'm missing. Oh, I guess we can go down the line here and talk about what the actual efficiencies of these spells are. So this is a revival with all the, you know, trimmings, if you will. Um, plus, you know, if you EF before it and you bone dust, you know, it would do a decent amount, right? And obviously it's the most efficient. Uh, the, the column over here is heals per mana spent. The column to the left is HBS. Um, if you are innervated, you can just organize, you can make a copy of this for you guys yourself. What you can do, if you ever want to see what the HPS of all the stuff is, you can just go like that. Um, you can distribute rows, sort table, sort by descending. As long as you highlight the rows that you want. And if you sort by descending on HPS, then you can see like what the best filler is to do when you're like innervated or something, right? Um, which for tier of mourning, it's just a spam EM. And for the RM build, it's just a spam vivify, right? Which is pretty, I feel like obvious. The RM build uses all of its excess mana on emergency vivifies and just, you know, uh, RSKs. Um, the Yulon build, build A has no excess mana. <laughs> It's really going to use all of its mana during that, those moments. It's really a cooldown healer. And so it's going to rely on it, its allies to help it when it's not in escape for reality mode or and you know, it's one minute celestials. But that being said, I think it'll still be fine. You're still going to have your RM hots roaming around. Um, they're going to be proccing random EMs from time to time that'll heal all the RMs. You know, I think it'll be fine. Plus, uh, you know, if you can get even one innervate every once in a while, you can go super hard with EM spams. You know, it'll be fine. So, um, hopefully I was able to create a clear and decise picture for you guys of what the two builds are and then the third sort of cheese build. Um, it's really cool that there is multiple builds. Ultimately, I guess, but for my brain, it was not cool at all because... I usually like to find a theme. Ho hopefully the math proves something really early on. And it's like I'm just floating down a river. Like I'm just compiling the numbers, you know, following the steps. This one I had to like, I would say actually do theory crafting. And uh, it was a little bit of a nightmare. This is how hard it was. And I, st I still think maybe there's some area where I've got something wrong. Like one thing that's bugging me is the RM math is all done assuming you have a bunch of hots out, right? Um, 
And so it's partially true because you will have a bunch of hots out, but you, you know, you're not supposed to be spamming, um, Bayline stomp, for, you know, but like, I don't, I don't know. It's like, it's so that math's a little off, but the numbers are so close that it doesn't really matter. Um, which build is higher healing? I also was unsuccessful in figuring out because they were so close and there's so many like tit for tats. Well, if you do this, you lose that. And if you do this, you lose that. But then this thing's filler becomes this and this becomes that. And then I was entertaining so many. Oh yeah, there's a weird wacky. I kind of explained already, but there's there's also like a third wacky build with the clouded focus life cycles build that kind of does around the same numbers. Um, and that build would would definitely be a chi G build because it wants more mana. And so it would just use chi G as a free healing source. And then it would um, use extra mana that it's gained probably from kicking, maybe. I don't know. I didn't really flesh it out because it didn't seem worth what worth the time. But it would have to take Cloud of Focus, obviously. And it would have to take Life Cycles. And so it would be a Life Cycles Cloud of Focus kind of play style. So if someone wanted to experiment and try that out, um, and you either make an adaptation to either build A or build B by weaving that in, feel free, you know. I don't know which build would be better, ultimately, or which town would be better to pair with it, Tier of Morning or Rising Mist. Uh, obviously, you'd have more... Um, you'd have way more pots out with Rising Mist, but then Rising Mist is sort of a greedy mistress in that you want to be kicking and resetting your RSK to extending the hots, right? And I guess you could do that and farm mana for your Cloud of Focus life cycle spam. That would be cool, and at least the Vivifies would be at a higher quality and you know, I guess you could always RSK out of it, um, extending the same person you've been spamming with EM. But then Tier of Morning also had some good synergy with it because while you're spamming on that person, you you would pick the target who has the longest duration knowing mist, and then you would life cycles cloud of focus that person super hard, and probably get uh, a a copy of that RM, right? And obviously that's really good. So. <sighs> yeah, I uh, the the non-confidence is getting to me a little bit, and I wasn't able to exactly crack specs and the best like for sure like 100% confidence uh, way to play, which is super annoying. But this is just the, the confusing nature of Monk and how hard the math was, and so uh, I think I came close to basically achieving it and I would be willing to probably bet that I did come up with the best way to play it but who knows only time will tell there doesn't really seem to be many other options I mean everything kind of just comes down to are you a tier of mourning or an RM player and are you which celestial are you using and then everything else kind of morphs around those playstyles because if you're a Yulon gamer that there goes like a third of the mana you're gonna use for the whole fight. It's gonna be used on Yulan spams, right? So suddenly that just morphs everything else, um, and just makes everything else follow suit. Also, this is like the, one of the biggest investments of all time, right? I mean, think about what this this investment means. It's two talent points here, four here, and one here, all so that you can just sort of kick, earn mana back, and heal while doing it. Um, so that's a heavy investment for free healing, which is probably how it should be. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to change that one talent. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, hopefully, some of this made sense. Um, I guess I can talk about what these things mean. Oh yeah, Zen, Zen Pulse is actually pretty damn good if, if you can guarantee five targets. That was something I should have mentioned. Um, I think, I'm not sure though, this will only be 12 uses, um, 3 times 12 is 36k of replaced healing, um, eh, it's probably, it's probably worth taking on 5 target fights, but I really don't know what you'd give up for, I think only the tier of morning build could probably squeeze it in, and I don't even know what you would replace in theory. I mean, the, the tree is just so cramped for point. I guess you'd, you'd have to lose Font of Life for it. Yeah, you'd have to lose Font of Life for it. So that, that's probably the switch you'd make. 
just here to there. Um, not really anything crazy. Um, oh yeah, I think you take Zen Pulse with the Mythic Plus build too, right? Obviously. That's where it's like actually useful. Um, uh, in testing, I thought I found like a really cool bug, but it was just me being dumb. But I thought that Zen Pulse was improperly, uh, proccing the number of Resonant Fists. Because <laughs> I saw a bunch of procs, but it just turns out Resonant Fist has like, multiple chances to proc off of one thing. Um, even though it says it has a one second cooldown. It can proc a couple times. But yeah. Um, I'll go over the talent trees, what you want to do with each build, I think, in the other video. Uh, I'll try to make those more sweet and just like, here's what you do. But this was like the fun video where I talked for a long time about how I sort of achieved certain numbers. Achieve sounds so pretentious, but... You get the feel, you get the vibe. I, yeah, I feel like sometimes I, I talk about things and I don't even talk about like the base part of it. Like what is escape from reality really do? Um, you know, but I just sort of assume that everyone has a base level of knowledge coming into this video. So feel free to, you know, leave any comments or suggestions of how I can like improve the videos. Um, you know, yeah. All right. Just went into here. Thanks for watching.